Good morning, church. We're going baptizing. Wow. We're so excited to see what the Lord will do today. And I promise you this. If, uh, if you've never been to a baptism Sunday, this service alone will change your life. Because you get to hear what God has done in people's lives. And you will watch how the Spirit of God will knit our hearts together as someone starts testifying what God has done. And you're sitting there in the crowd watching and saying, oh, this is amazing. That sounds a bit like my story. Or I connect with this, what the Lord did in my life. And it's really a magical moment. It's one of those few moments where you know the Spirit of God surely shows up in this place. That God reaches his hand down from heaven and blesses a person. We saw it with the Lord Jesus. And when he was baptized, when he was put under by John the Baptist and came forth, we heard the voice of God from heaven, the text says. And the Spirit, Holy Spirit showed up in the sign of a dove. And it all happened right there in a single moment. We know that God blesses baptism. And I want to read from Romans chapter 6 this morning to give you a little perspective on baptism and exactly what is happening. Is there something magical in the water? Yes, we poured some extra stuff in there. Uh, and we're going to dunk a couple of you under. We're going to hold you under for an extra three seconds, you know, to make sure purification is... No, 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 I'm just joking. It's just water. It is warm water, praise God, though. And so what, what is going on here? What is exactly happening when we baptize? I want to read from Romans chapter 6. You get to see the physical of what's happening. Obviously, somebody's getting into the water. We're putting them under, completely under the water and bringing them forth. What is this a picture of? It's a picture of Jesus' death, burial under the water, and resurrection out of the water. So resurrection power is taking place in this moment. And, and then we see spiritually what's happening is they're going from death to life. They're burying the old person, the old ways, the old sinful ways under the water and bringing, God is bringing forth someone brand new in Christ Jesus. So the symbolism is powerful. It's a beautiful picture. But what is happening physically is, yes, yeah, someone's going under the water and they're coming up. Again, identifying with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The church is testifying of that. But spiritually, something greater is happening. And they are leaving the old ways under the water, not walking with God, running away from God, running into sin. They're leaving all of that under the water, and they're coming forth in newness of life. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to walk with Jesus. I'm going to follow his ways. Newness of life for the rest of their life. It's found in Romans chapter 6. Listen to verse 1. It says, what shall we say then, the apostle Paul writing? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death, like this, we sure, certainly will be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For the one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves, here it is, dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the profession of faith. This is the declaration to the church and to the world. I am burying the old ways and the old self of running away from God. And I am raising, resurrected into a new life, following Jesus all the days of my life. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And we need this more than ever in our town, now don't we? 
We need this more than ever in ourselves, and that the Lord would do this work is a beautiful thing. And so what we're going to do right now, we've, uh, we're going to invite the worship team to come on stage, and as they do so, uh, we're going to do a couple things. Um, we have a microphone here so that uh, people can get up and give testimony, each one at a time. Um, we have quite a few being baptized today, praise God. And so uh, what we're going to do is one at a time, Aaron's going to, Pastor Aaron's going to help, and uh, each one come to the mic. I'm going to walk down here in just a moment after we pray, and I'm going to get into the water, and we will give, each one will give testimony first, and then they will come around this way, walk up into the stairs, and then come into the baptismal, and we will baptize them. The best thing, church, that you can be doing in this moment is praying for them. Maybe worship a little bit, bless the Lord. When they come up out of the water, let's cheer and bless them. And let's cheer to the Lord for what he has done in their lives. But let's be praying for each one as they give testimony, as they share the story of what Christ has done. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we worship you in this place. And we thank you for your goodness and grace. And we ask, God, that you would please do a wonderful, beautiful work in here now. And God, I pray for each one. All of them, all their family members and friends witnessing their baptism, that this would be a special moment for them between you and them. God, that you would reach your hand down from heaven, that you would bless and touch each one. You'd fill them with your spirit, new and afresh. That the old man, the old woman, the old ways would go under the water, and a new person in Christ Jesus would come forth. Lord, we bless you this morning. We thank you for this gift. Be with us now as we baptize. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole. I've been coming to Legacy for a few months now. I was raised in the church. My parents raised me in the church, and I made a decision for Christ as a kid, and I believe that I meant it at the time. I turned away from God during my teen years and pretty much all of my young adult life, and I didn't go back to following Jesus until a good friend of mine who I worked with started pushing me to read my Bible and to pray and to really seek God with my heart. And all the time my parents were praying for me. And I've been following Jesus for about six years now, and I'm still learning so much every day. Um, but I want everyone here to know that I will never turn my back on him again, and I give Jesus my whole life forever and ever. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer. Um, I've been coming to Legacy for about five months now. Um, I became a believer when I was about eight years old, and I remember the moment I asked Jesus into my heart, sitting on the staircase of my childhood home. Um, not, bef lo not long before this, my dad had got saved and started taking us to church. During my childhood and most of my teenage years, I had a close relationship with God. But when I turned 18, I lost my way and began to fall deeper and deeper into sin. The Lord was constantly speaking to me and calling me back, but I ignored the call and I leaned on my own understanding instead. This led to a lot of heartbreak for me. And I started to blame God for the way my life was until the moment he reminded me who I was talking to. I was completely humbled and I remembered I was his daughter. And after nearly 20 years, I repented and I realized I needed to change. From that moment, God drew me back to him and I never want to be away from him again. It has been the most powerful, joyful and beautiful thing to have my relationship with the Almighty restored. I want my life to honor him and the choices I make reflect my love for him.
Right, I'm not too great at public speaking here, but I'll give it a shot. Um, I've been, uh, my wife and I, Michaela, have been coming around a legacy for about six months now. Um, and uh, I wrote, a, you know, a little, like I'm being a, uh, Aaron said to uh, put this on an index card, I, I did it on a sheet of paper. So I'm, I'm being a rebel before I even hop in the water here. Um, anyhow, to give you a little bit about my background, um, I was born and raised in New York. Um, raised by a pretty religious uh, but faithful mom and uh, an alcoholic dad. Um, but I believe my mom was uh, part of the reason I stand before you today. Here. And her prayers and her devotion for me uh, are something that eventually led me to Christ. Um, but I was kind of tainted at an early age. I, uh, you know, t through the religiosity and um, kind of being pushed to go to church, I felt like you know, church church for me was sort of a reminder that uh, there was something more boring than uh, going to school. <laughs> and, um, and you know, at the time I felt like, you know, there was a bit of phoniness, like some sort of hypocrisy there, and I really didn't want anything to do with it. And I ended up leaving home at an early age, and I um, came out to L.A. to pursue my dreams in music. And I uh, went to school uh, for music out here. Um, and after I graduated, I got met by a few people who invited me to go to this church. And I ended up studying the Bible with a few people, um, got baptized back then in 1995. And, um, and you know, at the time, I, was, I kind of felt like I was persuaded or coerced somewhat into it. And I felt like my heart wasn't all quite in, um, although I made that commitment to Christ back then. Um, and I really wanted to do this this time just because the Spirit put it on my heart and I want to do it on my own volition, on my own accord, without any pressure, without any anybody tell me it was the thing to do. Um, so fast forward a few years, I met my lovely Italian wife um, and, uh, and she's from Rome. She inter I introduced her to the church that I was at at that time. She became a Christian and she also got baptized and, and soon after we got married. Um, funny thing is when um, when I when I spoke to her dad on the phone and asked her to become my wife, I said I said to him, um, you know, it's okay if I marry your daughter. And he was like, <laughs> he says to me, uh, uh, don't ask me, ask Mrs. Mickey. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, um, there's been you know quite a bit of unrepentant sin in my life over the years, even as a Christ follower. I won't I won't go into all the details, but um, you know we'll be here till the tacos are cold um, and um, uh, and to share a bit about what baptism means to me I'm um, like Josh shared about like Romans 6 um, to me it, it holds a lot of significance you know it says in Romans 6 that we're baptized we're baptized into Christ's death his burial and resurrection and we're given a new life and that, that's a huge deal to me it's not something I really take lightly and um, I kind of look at this opportunity as like, uh, it's like a wedding ceremony. You know, we're here. I'm sharing my vows before you guys um, as witnesses. And God already gave his promises to me. He told me, you know, uh, his, his biggest gift and promises is life, you know, eternal, eternal life with him. I mean, how can I, you know, ask for anything more than that? And, um, and in Peter 3, it says that we're, we're making a pledge of a good conscience towards God right now when we, when we stand before God and acknowledge to him that we want to dedicate our lives to him. So for me, it's like a rededication, you know, um, and, uh, and one last thing I just want to say as I thank, I thank my wife for just sticking it out <laughs> with me. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't want to like, like get all emotional in front of people, but uh, I just want to be honest. Um, I've had a chance of marriage. And uh, I've done a lot to hurt my wife, and um, I truly apologize for those things before all you people. And those times I felt like giving up on her and God. 
But he's held me together, and he's held us together. And I thank him for that, and I thank him that he brought us together, and I look forward to the plans that he has for both of us. Um, and just one last thing I wanted to share. You know, Josh, Josh sends out these devotionals I've been reading, and um, I'm a couple days behind, as usual. But, <laughs> but I read Hebrews, Hebrews 2 today, and I wanted to just share a little bit of that, because it, uh, I felt like God spoke to me um, this morning. In Hebrews 2, my eyes are kind of bad. I'm not young anymore. <laughs> it says, What is the man that you're mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything under his feet. In putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at the present, we do not see everything subject to him, but we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels, Um, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone and bringing many sons to glory it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should be made the author of their salvation perfect through suffering both the one who makes men holy and the one who are and the ones who are made holy are of the same family so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers he says I will declare your name to my brothers in the presence of the congregation I will sing your praises that was God speaking directly to me this morning I mean he was saying to me that you're my brother you're in my family you're good you know and um, that was really encouraging and I just want to share that with you um, so anyhow um, thanks for letting me share and you know go over my minute here but uh, let's see this. Here at your feet, my desires and dreams I lay down. Um, hi, my name is Zoe, and I've been coming to Legacy for two months now. And um, I've made the decision to get baptized because I'm a sinner and I want to be forgiven and I want to leave my past life and be reborn through Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us be his begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I believe in Jesus Christ because he gave his life for us sinners. Um, Ephesians 2 8 through 9 says for it's by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it's the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast thank you jesus for the gift of salvation oh, Oh, you hurting and broken within. Oh, Good morning, Legacy. My name is Jaimani, and I've been coming to Legacy for about six and a half months. Um, I came here uh, kind of on a limb. I was looking up churches in the, in the area, and uh, Legacy was one of the churches that popped up. Um, I came here during the nine year, the nine year anniversary, and um, <laughs> they they were serving food. <laughs> and I was and you know um, church has never really been interesting for me. Um, I grew up Baptist, um, so church for me was never really my thing, and you know. I saw food and I was like, well, maybe I'll start coming here more often. <laughs> and um, they were uh, in a kind enough way to tell me, you know, they humbled me. They said, this is not, this is not service every day. You just happen to come on the right time. <laughs> so um, for me, uh, <sighs> I'm sorry.
for me, uh, I know the Lord has been working in my life for a very long time because um, He chose me from a very young age. Um, even though I was, I was lost and I blamed Him for my pain and, and suffering and growing up without a father and then when I had a stepdad, He uh, sexually assaulted me so I blamed Him for that and you know, asked Him, you know, if you love me God, why did you put me through this pain? And that pushed me away from the church, pushed me away from, from believing in, in Him. And I never had a family until I found Legacy. And it was harder for me because I'm originally from the East Coast. I'm from Connecticut. So I flew 3,000 miles here. Like, like they, you know, faith without works is dead. So I, I flew down here by faith. And I just happened to run into Legacy. And I have no family here. My mom's back home. My brother's back home. And they have been my, my rock. And, I, and I, I'm so glad that even though I didn't grow up without a father, my mom was was there to raise two boys but on her own. And that's not an easy thing to do. And I feel like the, the prodigal son because I was so lost and, and blaming him for everything. But I am so glad that he claim, still claims me as, his as a child of God, even though I've done a lot of things. And I just want to give thanks to Legacy and Special thanks to Paul and Sean for taking me under their wing. You know, since the first day I got here, Paul is treating me nothing but like a fa like the son, the father I've always. He's treating me like a son. You know, he's like the father I never had but always wanted. And I'm just so happy that everybody here is so welcoming because I've never had a church like this before. So. I just want to thank God for help, helping me find legacy, and I want to thank Legacy for you guys treating me like family. My name is Scott. I've been coming to Legacy for about a month and a half now. Um, prior to coming here, I've always kind of been lost in a sense. Um, what really brought me here was I was I was ready to to lose my life um, to end it myself and. It was a Sunday and I was referred to come here and I came here and it kind of just gave me a whole new revival and brought me back to, to a faith that I've lost. Um, I, I don't work in the most savory of, of jobs. I work in nightlife security. I do executive protection. Um, so I'm not always presented with the most faithful of people. And uh, I realize my armor was just being chipped away and I, I needed to come back to it. Um, the baptism is, is, you know, it's just a promise before God to, to be less like me and more like Jesus. Oh, what a Savior the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hello, Legacy. Uh, my name is Selena Saucedo, and I've been coming to Legacy for just over two years. And I am honored 
blessed and so thankful to be standing here today in front of my Lord and church community on this special day. About five years ago, I had entered into the darkest moments of my life where I felt like I had truly walked away from God. I sought comfort and love from the world because I felt so alone and unloved, which never made any sense to me. I come from the most loving of homes with a mother and father who have showered me with love and support and a sister who I love more than anything and she me just as fiercely. So why did it feel like something was missing? I chased after friendships seeking that comfort and need not to feel alone and I gave my heart to somebody fully to someone seeking that undying and everlasting love that I had seen in movies and read about in books. But the people and world didn't give me the comfort and love I craved, but rather it destroyed me, breaking me to the point where I felt even more alone and unloved than ever before. In 2021, God sent me a lifeline in the form of three people who without, I wouldn't be here standing today. Their names are Gabriella, her husband Stephen, and Stephen's sister Oksana. In August of that year, they introduced me to Legacy City Church, where the, for the first time in many years, I felt God's love and presence. I had never felt such peace and a sense of spiritual comfort in such a long time. Now I'd like to say that it was on that day that I was saved, but it wasn't. It wouldn't be until eight months later after eight long months of spiritual warfare on Easter Sunday of 2022 at Legacy Service, where I came to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken, beaten, and covered in sin and said to him, I'm done. I'm so tired. Please, I don't deserve it, but please help me, save me. And it was on that day where the Lord held me in his arms and rejoiced. He gave me the comfort and love I had been searching for so long, and he gave me so much more. On that day, he promised to care for me and heal me of all my wounds. And he promised that he'd refill my cup until it overflowed and then some. He promised to love me that, with that everlasting and undying love that only He can give. He is enough. His grace is enough. So today in front of you, my family, my friends, and my community, I shout to the world that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and today I commit myself to Him. I love you, Jesus. Amen. There's wounds which mother chosen one Great more sense to glory Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer. I have been coming to Legacy for about seven months already. I grew up learning that there was a God. However, it wasn't until I began reading the Bible for myself that I understood who God was. And what he did for me on the cross. That led me to look for a church and I found legacy. I am ready to take the next step in following Christ and committing my life to him by getting baptized here today. Thank you. Before the man of holy war, I cannot even answer the peace and the will of God. Hi. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Axel. <laughs> Sometimes I feel scared of the dark. Then I remember God is light and he is with me. So I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort. Psalm 23. Axel, have you decided to follow Jesus? Yeah. No turning back. You ready to get baptized, buddy? Okay, come on, get in the water. Thank you for having me. My name is Johnston Kelly Herbsleb. I was born to Richard Warren Herbsleb, the second and only child, and Eleanor Jane Vidal, the oldest child of five kids, three girls and two boys. Eleanor, my mother, had two kids, my older brother and sister with Ronnie and Donna with Tony Blatchford, separated, and then had an illeg illegitimate daughter, Cynthia, she was put up for adoption. We never knew about her till years later. Then she married my father and had my brother Richard and myself. They split up when I was two. My father raised Richard and my brother and myself as a single father. We were baptized at St. Charles Church at days five and seven. My father was an actor. We grew up in Toluca Lake in a modest house. We were involved in school and city league sports, baseball, football, martial arts. At age nine, scouts were looking for kids for a milk commercial. Out of hundreds, I was one of 11 picked. The next thing I know, I was co-starring with some of the biggest actors on the planet, Henry Fonda, Michael Landon, Robert Blake, Brenda Vaccaro, Angelina Jolie's father, John Boyd. The list goes on. I rose to stardom at a young age. I left home at age 17. I was flying to Texas and vis to visit my mother, where somehow I made the front page of the Texas Times when a hijacker had smuggled a C4 bomb on the plane and was going to blow us all up. God had my back. Later, my sister Cynthia was dating Senator of California, Alan Robbins, who she exposed for racketeering. He did five years in federal prison. And we hid her from his henchmen for several years. Again, God had my back. Growing up, I was in three unions, the Screen Actors Guild since age five, the Musicians Union, Local 1595, a construction union. There's so much more to this story that I do not have time to, for at this moment. I'm currently working on a major motion picture screenplay and I'm in need of help and support again. I know 
that God has my back. I stand here before you all thanking you in advance for your support and your prayers and your love. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Pour out a praise, pour out a praise with your breath. I don't have a script for this, but um, my name is Maddie, I'm 15, um, and I've been coming to Legacy for I don't know how long, but a long time. Um, I just forgot everything I was going to say. Uh, well, okay. Um, I come from a background where my parents are separate, um, and you'd be very surprised how different going from a Catholic and Christian home is. Um, but I always felt like, you know, I really, really loved God as a kid, and I still do. So I got baptized at Legacy um, when I was probably like, I want to say nine. My mom knows, I'm sure. Um, but, um, you know, during COVID was a really hard time for me, I'm sure it was everyone. And um, I really walked away. Um, I walked away so much from God that I left my mom. Um, I feel really bad for <laughs> and I've apologized a bunch of times but you know um, but she she had she didn't give up on me and I really I'm really really grateful for that because I feel like you know um, when I walked away from God so much um, not only did I leave my mom which is like it's my mom but um, I just became friends with really bad people who really um, didn't influence me well, um, and it got very dark. Um, you know, without God, it feels like there's no life, and I felt like I didn't need to live anymore. Um, and so I've, I had multiple times where I thought that it was it for me, um, but, you know, God always was in the back of my mind speaking to me and saying that no, my life was, there's still more to live for. Um, and uh, a couple years later, I went back with my mom, and um, I just praise God for that, that she actually stood in there and waited for me. Um, I'm choosing to get baptized today because, well, I want to, <laughs> but I really feel like the Lord is calling on me too, because I've just, I'm like, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, well, do it now, um, and I, I just, I can't express how much I love my mom, and she really has been my rock, so, thank you. Our loves, we pour out a praise to you. Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Crystal. Um, I've been coming to Legacy for about two months now. Um, in the last few years, I've fallen into a really dark place, um, living a worldly life due to an emotionally abusive relationship. I was struggling with my mental health, depression, anxiety, and with alcohol abuse issues. While visiting my mom in Mexico a few months ago, I decided to visit the church she attends for the first time. And from that moment, God transformed my life. In Proverbs 20:30, it says, sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. Jesus saw me and met me at my lowest and still showed me I am worthy. Thanks to his glory, I am still alive today. He healed me and saved me in every way possible. I am truly blessed to be standing here today and to be able to publicly declare my faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Michelle, 
I've been coming since、um, September, so like five months now with my husband.、Um, so I got saved、um, when I was about ten years old. And I grew up going to、um, a Korean evangelical church. My mom's Korean,、um, and those people go hardcore for Jesus. It's awesome. <laughs> It's like 4 a.m. prayers. It's crazy.、Um, <laughs> so,、um, and it's it's been. Quite a journey. I have been on fire for God. I've,、um, sorry, <laughs> darn, I've been emotional all morning. <laughs>、um, I've backslid and、um, just everything in between.、Um, and honestly, for most of my life, I, I thought I was good. You know, I had Jesus in my back pocket, and I thought I could do whatever I wanted.、Um, But I've I felt the Holy Spirit convict me and correct me like a father should, and、um, the last few years have been awesome. He's been drawing me closer to Him.、Um, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs>、um, I think I've just throughout my life I've just sort of felt like the prodigal son and. Or the lost lamb, you know. Jesus has somehow. He always kept coming back for me, or he would wait for me with all the love and open arms、um, that I just still can't believe to this day.、Um, so I'm just so happy I get to be here and、um, publicly dedicate my life to to God. So thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Church. Hey, I'm Steve,、uh, Michelle's husband. So, however long she's been coming, that's how long I have been coming.、Uh, let me just look around, make sure I can say this with some authority. Yeah, I think about half of you are younger than me. And half of you are older than me,、um, so being in the middle, I can probably say this with some authority, which is, life without God can be really hard. And I've turned to alcohol, medication, the pursuit of money.、Um, obviously, nothing filled the void. So my method was I kept subtracting things off of this list, things that I knew wouldn't help. Or couldn't help, and and that list got smaller and smaller, and、uh, you know, he of course was on the list. He was like on page three.、Um, I hit my rock bottom over seven years ago, but I wasn't able to humble myself at that time to confess or to seek forgiveness. I don't think I was ready to forgive myself.、Um, God was. But I was ready to move three thousand miles away from my problems, and I came here.、Um, and then it all began. Right, you meet a person. Michelle works at a coffee shop, and in, in Hollywood, right? And like, good luck meeting Christians there. Well, Josh happens to go to that coffee shop, so, <laughs> and it's like, you know. This is how he works.、Um, so it's been slow, but I buried myself in the word, and sure enough, you start accepting little pieces as truth, and one thing led to another. I have been saved. I've let go. I'm receiving that grace, the mercy, and forgiveness, and I'm finally free because I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So I was brought up in a Greek Orthodox church, but I am happy to be finding my home in this Christian body of believers.
your son for the girl. My name is Glory, and I've been attending Legacy for almost three years now. I grew up in the Catholic Church, and I knew God was good, but I didn't really know how amazing He truly is. During college and into my adult years, I started to experience a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. I turned to alcohol and ungodly relationships to escape from all the darkness, but I found myself in a much darker place. In 2020, my aunt, who was like a second mom to me, got diagnosed with terminal cancer. I was inspired by how she put her trust in God to help her fight through each day. She opened my eyes to the power of prayer, and that's when I started to rebuild my relationship with God. I realized that it was peace I had been seeking all along. I'm thankful for our God who gives me that peace that surpasses all understanding. The doctors gave my aunt six months to live, but God gave her three and a half more years of life. Jesus has truly transformed my heart and has gotten rid of a lot of my anxiety, and I haven't had a panic attack in almost a year. <laughs> Praise God. God gave me the courage to walk away from a long-term relationship that wasn't right for me. And when I started trusting in him more, he gave me my future husband. Alex was the one who invited me to come to Legacy when we started dating. And now we're getting married in June. I'm thankful, thankful for Legacy and for all of you who have encouraged me, prayed for me, and have been part of my walk with God. Today, I'm making my own decision to surrender myself to Jesus, who sacrificed, sacrificed his life on the cross for my sins. I'm so grateful for his forgiveness and grace, and I'm ready to put all of my faith and trust in him. Jesus Christ is truly my Lord and Savior. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Uh, it's my first time at Legacy, and it uh, really has an amazing, amazing, I uh, can't really explain it, but uh, it feels good here. Um, my good friend, childhood friend, Johnston, in invited me uh, to come in, and, and uh, you know, I um, grew up through a Catholic-type environment and church and everything. Went through Catholic school. It's pretty close with God. He's always been by my side. And, but um, recently, my son passed away. So it's been, whew, it was a sad thing, and just could not realize how to handle that. That's been uh, the hardest thing I've ever dealt with in my life, you know? God's always guided me, He's given me a great family beautiful wife two children but that was really hurt and uh, just um, really don't know how to deal with it how to understand it and a lot of thoughts go through your mind so but uh, God will always be with me I always feel pretty strong and got to get through it uh, other than that, I just uh, don't have much more to say. God bless everybody. Invitation to let it all go. I see it now, laying it down. I know the eye. Run to the Father, fall into one. Okay. The reason I want to get baptized... I've never been on a screen before. <laughs> Why am I on the screen? 
Sorry for my cringy t-shirt. The reason I want to get baptized is because I believe in Jesus and I believe he's my Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Awesome. Again, it's the testimony that God is still alive and still working in our city, in our town, in our church. Amen. The Lord is at work. I love these baptisms because, again, to, to hear it, it is not about the presentation. It's not about what happens and whether or not it's perfect or not. None of that even matters. It's, it's the testimony out of each person's mouth that declares that Jesus is Lord in their life and they just want to follow him. It's the most powerful thing. Look, once there was not a church and now there are all these people coming close to God and into relationship with him and that's what we're thankful for. And so we just want to give praise to God and thanks to God for what he has done in all of these baptisms today. And can we pray? Uh, just asking the Lord to bless all those who are baptized. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the great work of your love and your grace in our lives that once we were dead in sin, far from you, running from you, and you and your goodness and your grace came on a rescue mission to save us from ourselves, from destroying ourselves, destroying those around us, destroying life, and you, you graciously don't let us just run into the darkness. You, you pursue us. You find us. You laid your life down for us so we could come to life, come to know you. We ask God that you would show yourself faithful to all those who are baptized. God, that you would show yourself faithful again to your church, that you would continue with us in this new season. There would be a new song to sing, new life, life in that abundantly brought forth in our lives individually that we would bury the old person and walk in newness of life that we would flee the darkness and run into the light into christ lord we ask that you are pleased with all that was done today and we ask holy spirit that you would comfort and navigate each person in this city for your glory bring comfort and rest and peace like only you can god we surrender our lives to you again today as a church body as one in Christ, we surrender our lives to you. Use us for your glory in this city. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Many of you are nervous. I'm going to drop the mic, huh? Whoops. No, I just... Don't worry. It's okay. Um, let's all stand up. Thank you for worshiping with us today. I'm going to ask uh, our leadership to come forward as we close the service. And I'm just going to have all of our leadership stand up here at the front. And all it is is an opportunity for some of you here in the crowd today to say, you know what, I need some prayer as the service closes. I, I just sense the Lord speaking to me and I got to go, I need some prayer. I need to draw close to the Lord. I, I, did, I, I need that today. And so we've made that available for you. We have leadership up here. Thank you everyone for coming up. And We'd love to pray for you as the service closes. Of course, we have taco, fresh tacos out there. Praise God. Out there, carne asada and pastor and all the rest. And it's going to be amazing. Praise God. But uh, if you want to hang out for a bit and you'd like to receive some prayer, you can come forward after this service, okay? Uh, why did we provide tacos? Because we just want you to fellowship and hang out and have a great time, okay? And uh, it's a little muddy out there on the grass, so if you want to bring food back inside, you can, and you can hang out in the fellowship in here. We'll make it available for everybody for another hour or so, okay? Love you guys. God bless you. The Lord be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.